Hello YouTube, this is Red Dog with another video for you guys. So, this video, <laughs> I know it's my mic's lined up right there. I'm going to give you tips and tricks and sort of a build how I use when I'm playing Force. Now, before I get into details about the video, just letting you know that any gear that you see you may not like or anything like that or any kind of build or whatever or anything like that you see of me, other people, whatever never knock on people's gear just let them play how they want to play if you see something that you don't like you know keep it to yourself that being said let's get right to it so we're just going to cover th three topics today and this is pretty much how i built my force around so like i said if there's certain skills that you do like to use certain skills you don't like to use etc etc now this is just how i use my build and i'm just gonna give you guys just little tips uh you know how you should do force so immediately you should always or what i would do is sub tecker so i like sub tecker because it gives you access to your other elements again i'll go through all that stuff which is right now um step one for force is weapons of course so unlike other physical classes rangers hunters gunners fighters they can all reliably use one weapon of a light element and they will be perfectly fine with that you know if they're fighting false bond or you know enemies weak to light they'll be more than okay and then if they're not fighting enemies that are not weak to light they're just fighting with raw damage force is a little different we rely on our elements so when you're making a palette of weapons you of course do a rainbow palette as i have every single element so fire light ice wind lightning and dark so i use every element on my palette so that'll help me be flexible by the way if you didn't know this uh when you're in your palette like this you can hit right on the d-pad and open your sub palette just in case you didn't know that if you didn't know that great if you didn't there you go you can switch between your sub palette, hit right again, go right back. So anyway, um, I'm going to my items here, put my weapons, and it's just, you know, a little overview of my weapons. So I have an ice weapon, work in progress, have a light weapon, have a fire weapon, have a dark weapon, <laughs> weapon in progress, have a lightning weapon, and have a wind. Wind is probably my most underused spell, as I just use it just to open the clock on Elder, and that's about it. But now that you can see how I have to use every element to kind of adjust to my situation, which is good for a force. Only pain in the butt part is making all your weapons. All the time I spent either gathering the materials for these weapons, or, you know, buying them, fixing them, and such and such. It could be a pain in the butt. So if that's discouraging you from being a force, don't let it because it's really fun to be a force. Really, really fun. And this is the class I use the most. So with weapons out the way, um, we'll get into maybe the kind of skills you should be using, which, you know, again, this is your play style. So you can be really flexible with just spells and stuff. So this is how I have, as soon as I get down to it, so you have different spells. I have to just use my mouse. So different spells. Um, for fo for fire moves, I will stick with Foey and Gifoy as I have right here. So I have Foey, then I have Red Foey, then I have Gifoy, then I have Ill Foey. Um, I'll show you just a little bit, you know, how my skills work and why I use Ill Foey. A lot of people don't use Ill Foey because it takes forever to cast, blah, 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 whatever. But I'll show you, you know, how I use Ill Foey. And of course, for ice, I'll use Ill Barter for big bosses. Um, if I'm soloing bosses that are weak to ice, Ill Barter is your best friend. Barter for good sweeping of enemies. Uh, Red Barter is one of my favorite ice spells. You know, you do want to get close to the enemy, but all that nice, delicious freezing you can do to enemies, really cool. And then, of course, Gee Barter got a little bit more power, a little less ability to freeze people, but it does Kono in front of you. For light, I use the spells. I use rock grants. Um, you know, same thing with bosses. Get getting close with bosses. Light them up with the rock grants. Ill grants is one of my favorite light spells. At a distance, stay away from your enemy. Blast them with little dots of light and stuff like that. It's cool. And then, not grants is 
you throw out a sphere of light and it lingers for a while. You could throw these up everywhere, especially for enemies where it gets light and do constant damage. And of course you have, I use Gee Grants. Of course you do have to be a little close for this attack, but this is good for enemies who get stunned and get knocked down. You can get close and kind of, you know, deal damage. Now for dark spells, I will use Mijit, which is a nice little exploding dark tech that if they get clustered together with in combination of Zondil, that's why you saw it on my palette, you could do some really good damage. Um, Gimajid, I'll again use Zondil, throw out Gimajid, damage them all at once. Namajid, it's good for bosses or enemies with a lot of health. Uh, does take a while to get the charge going, but when you do, a lot of damage. And I kind of just threw Samajid in there. I don't really use it. Just throws out little three orbs that, you know, do some decent damage. That's about it. And for lightning, I use Gizande, which is really high damaging spell. Great for bosses like Elder. If you use this with Elder, and then the skills I'll show you in a second, you could do some lot of good punishment. Of course, Zande. I love Zande. Just drop a lightning bolt on an enemy. Really good for damage. Um, not Zande is a really good one that I use, especially on bosses. You know, that weak to le electricity, stuff like that. Uh, once you charge the tech, keep tapping the button that you have it assigned to. Keep busting up Zandes. And as you can see, it has a lot of power. And of course, I, I don't know why I have this in my weapon, but Zandil is really good to have your weapon. Since I do use a pro controller, I can have Zandil going on my palette. But, you know, sometimes I will use it on my weapon itself. And then, you know, it's in, you can get in conjunction with any of these spells. And that's why I have it on my sub palette. And then Wind Magic, again, you know, not my favorite, but Razan. And then, of course, you have Suzan. And then Gizan. And then Ilzan. So, you know, you're not going to be using Wind Magic a lot. I generally don't. Maybe I'll screw around the forest a little bit and use it on them. And, you know, eh, they're okay. Waiting for crafting still. So, once crafting comes, that's a different story. But anyway, now that we're done with weapons and techs, we'll get on to skill trees. Now again, this is very indicative if you want to play force and do a lot of damage. Because I see a lot of forces that using the wrong thing in their skill trees. But again, like I said before earlier in the video, this is how you want to play force. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you, hey, this is how you play force. But I'll show you anyway. So my skill tree like is set up as such. So... For my force, of course, you put three into tech powers and start learning, you know, all your basics. All these top skills are free, so don't be afraid to dump your points in there. So go ahead and dump your points in there. Um, the things to avoid, you really think anything to beef up your tech power, as I'll explain in a second. Uh, PP, ignore that. Again, I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, Photon bullet. I currently have two. This is really good for... Um, if you're at a, if you're at a distance, and you need to well, let me use my controller, and you need to recover some PP, and then of course the potency shouldn't really matter. It's just really about recovering PP at a distance. If you get close to an enemy, you can hit up with the orb and your weapon. Like I said, really good for getting your PP back if you're at far ranges and stuff like that. So let's we'll go down just a little bit now. Element conversion will confuse people because they'll put all their points into it. And if you set up your rainbow, rainbow palette accordingly, you only need one point into the skill. So what people end up doing is they put all their points in there, thinking that's good. No, you just need one point. If you put this in five points, that means you're mixing your palettes with text. So if you have a fire rod, you're putting ice spells in there. You're putting lightning spells in there. And that right there will tell if you want to, you know, put that at five points. And that's for people who only want to use one or two rods. Again, I ill advise you not do this because your elements are important on force and you should only put one on here. So that's why I strongly urge you make a rainbow palette. Like I said, it'll be expensive, but trust me, it'll turn out the best for you. So you definitely want to get charged escape and rod preservation. So with charged escape, um, you'll maintain your charge while you charge your technique. And then preservation will make sure that you don't consume PP every time you use your charge escape. So if you're doing a boss and then you want to charge a tech before you go into the boss, 
you could do that without using more PP. Or if you have a launch stit where if you're going from point A to point B without any enemies, you can have a tech charge ready to go, like Ilfoy for example. And of course, charge PP revival lets you recover PP when it's charged. Make sure you put a point into this. And then of course, max out advanced tech perfect attacks. Definitely want to max this out. And you definitely want to get down your perfect attacks. Perfect attacks are lighted with light text are a little annoying because sometimes you can't really see, you know, the red circle when it closes in on you when you use your light text. So be a little more observant. You know, I play on my Xbox One X with a 4K TV, so I could see it just fine, everything like that. But sometimes when you're using a lot of your light spells, you can't really see that. So just make sure you're really aware of that. And then you're just looking up, make sure you get your just your perfect attacks because you definitely want that 10 out of 10. Next, you want to do advanced charge tech. You know, get that to 10. And even get your advanced tech charge to two. Get advanced tech charge two to five. Ignore photon flare. I see so many forces using photon flare. Do not use photon flare. Only use photon flare as a last resort. And I mean, I, I don't even stress you ever use photon flare. Some people do. Some people see it and it's like, oh, photon flare. I could I could do a lot of damage and stuff like that. Yeah, true. You could do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So you have 45 seconds with a 90 second cooldown. And you get 200 tech power. It makes no sense to get extra 200 tech power for 45 seconds when you can beef up your techs. Do a lot more damage with your elements. Trust me, a lot of people are going to get tired of me saying that, but for as many MMOs I play and I played as a mage, they're important. So do not Get Photon Flare. May look enticing, but trust me, you do not need it. So, no points to that. So now the meat and potatoes of being a forest, your elements. So, immediately, level up Flame Masteries 1, 2, Freeze Masteries 1 and 2, and Lightning Masteries 1 and 2. And you'll be set. Um, before people like to, before in JP, when the level cap was 70, didn't have more didn't have that many options for skill points so it was very little limited but now there were 75 and other stuff hopefully 80 soon you know we'll get you know plethora more stuff but anyway um make sure you max out flame tech short charge this will actually cut your techniques costing for fire spells by 50 percent and this is how you can spam info away and this is why i always will use info away because i can cast it in half the time you know, you are in danger when you're just standing there because you can't move, but trust me, this is going to work great for you. Uh, with ice, don't really have to worry about freezing enemies. If you're fighting ultimate enemies, they usually will bust out the ice really quick. So don't worry about deep freeze, freeze boost, or frost detonation. age. Don't put any points into freezing because it's just really not needed. And of course, uh, lightning tech PP preservation. This actually cuts the uses PP of your spells. So I advise you to definitely use this. As you see, minus 10 consumption for PP for your lightning spells. So if you're fighting bars, bosses like Big Varder or you're in the mines or anything like that, you know, you're going to have a lot of PP to use your Zonday techs. So strongly urge you max that out. And that's it for force skill trees. Now, not done yet because it's gotta go over Tekker. Now Tekker's gonna be a little different, but bear with me. So okay, Tekker. Now Tekker is here to supplement you know your force. So immediately, of course, put three into tech power up, you know, self plan sorry. Um Maxi's out of course, you know, being a force, whatever. You get those skill trees for those free anyway. So for Forest, you, I mean for Tekker, you're going to want to up your tech power up. You're going to get that up. Maybe wondering why. You're going to remember, Tekker is supplementing your Forest. So you want to put as much tech power as you can because Tekker really doesn't have that much in some Forest power. It just does other stuff like support. So we're using it as support. And then you're going to max PP up too. So you get that to 10 out of 10. Um, you're going to get Tech Charge J8 Edition, so make sure you get that one. It'll convert your Charge Tech into a perfect attack, so it'll give you like a little small cooldown, like 0.25%. Pretty much, instead of attacking and then charging, you just go straight to charging. So, like I said, it's a very tiny cooldown, so 
by the time you're done casting a spell you can just spam perfect attacks all the time so that's why you want force to uh, have your skill set up like this so your perfect attacks 10 out of 10 with this yeah you'll be doing a lot of damage um, PP restore it make sure you max that out that'll help you boost your PP recovery this is a very important skill this will let you um, cast certain spells like bosses like uh, Luther and other bosses they're big bosses that if you want to stand still use ill grants and re recover your pp really fast you want this to kick in um it'll help you when you're on the move recover your pp a lot faster and then when you're stationary by giving you 350 percent increase rate so make sure you max that out uh shift the rest of the band reverser leave all that alone don't really need that you can make another skill tree if you want to play tecker and then do it that way but this is for your force so don't worry about shift the, you know, you can always apply a little bit, shift it to yourself, and there you go. Of course, uh, do super treatment. Uh, super treatment will, if you cure someone of a status element, it'll just explosively recharge your PP recovery. So make sure you get this. It'll last quite a while, 30 seconds, and it'll come in a pinch if you're fighting bosses that cut your HP, or a lot of people are on fire near you, confused, shocked, whatever. So make sure you get this nice little poop peep, little pp boost for you guys so yeah now for the meat and potatoes of tecker your other three elements wind light and dark you know even though i said wind is useless you can still max it out um it can be some damaging spells once we're able to craft spells but you know still max it out and of course max out your light masteries get that up don't have to worry about panic boost because if you're using ill grants one of those hits is going to panic anyway, so don't worry about it. Uh, do your Dark Masteries, and I was on the fence about Poison Detonation, but don't really need it. Again, you want your elements. And last but not least, you want Element Precision Hit. Now, this actually will boost the damage you deal elementally to enemies' weaknesses. So when you hit an enemy in a weakness, your damage is going to skyrocket. So make sure you max that out. And yeah that's about it for both of the skill trees for force and tecker and of course like i said you can add another skill tree and before i wrap this portion up never use recommended setup at all because the game will just give you the weirdest setup and you're gonna be like what so make sure you just don't use that i wouldn't recommend it to anyone i've had alliance members that did this and screwed their trees up so yeah make sure you don't do that so now that that's done one little piece um that i have to go over with the final piece will be armor and then thoughts so with how my armor is um <clears throat> you can have your armor kind of any way you like it but kind of like having a lot of tech power is what a lot of people do of course mine is just straight for tech power and of course the set gives me um hp and max pp so i had an old set my hp is very low i was glass cannon and i was dying so make sure that you have a nice set that you're going to make yourselves and have a lot of hp you at least push over 700 into the 800s like i have of course your weapons will change that depending on how you augment them and stuff skill rings um this is another one of my favorite skill rings It'll pull up a little Jusgar as you're casting. I won't get to tell you how many times this has saved my life. <laughs> so make sure you get this. You know, getting the materials for this is a little pain in the butt because you have to mine for it. And then lastly, I got Hunter's Physique, which will give you a nice defense bonus and prevention of getting knocked around. So that's why you do see it right here. So there you go, guys. Just a quick overview of Force. Um, I see a lot of people in my alliance are playing for us and they ask a lot of questions about for us. Again, experiment, see what you like about a class. There's never a wrong way to play a class. Okay, you know, maybe there is. I mean, you could play a class very wrong. But hey, if it suits you, you know, play it. I guess that's what I can say. But I hope this guide has helped you guys kind of figure out what you want to do for us. Um, if this video is a little popular and I got a lot of people viewing it, I'll make them on the other classes. But just maybe the classes I already have and then work on some other ones. And I have another video to put out tomorrow about something that 
it's very particular so till next time guys be sure to like comment and subscribe and it's mad dog and i am out